Cushing's disease results when the body produces too much of a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is produced and stored by the adrenals, two small glands that sit on top of the kidneys. Dogs, cats, and horses, as well as humans, can get Cushing's disease. It is more commonly found in dogs than in cats or horses. Cortisol is one of the body's natural steroids. A normal amount of cortisol helps the body adapt in times of stress. Cortisol also helps regulate proper body weight, tissue structure, skin condition, and other features of good health. But too much cortisol weakens the immune system, leaving the body vulnerable to other diseases and infections. There are two common types of Cushing's disease. Most canines, Cushing's disease occurs naturally and is either pituitary dependent or adrenal dependent. About 80 to 85 percent of Cushing's is pituitary dependent, meaning it's triggered by a tumor on the pituitary, a pea-sized gland at the base of the brain. The pituitary makes a number of hormones, including adrenocorticotropic hormone, known as ACTH. The pituitary tumor causes overproduction of ACTH, which travels through the bloodstream to the adrenal glands, stimulating them to produce more cortisol than the body needs. In the other 15 to 20 percent of Cushing's dogs, a tumor in one or both adrenal glands produces excess cortisol. Number 7. Up to 90% of dogs with Cushing's disease have polyuria and polydipsia. Number 6. Excellent appetite or polyphagia is present in most of these dogs. Number 5. Muscle weakness is quite common, resulting from muscle wasting due to the catabolic effects of cortisol. Number 4. Many of these dogs develop a bloated or pot-bellied appearance to their abdomen because of an increase of fat within the abdominal organs. Number 3. Excessive panting is also common. Number 2. Hair loss is a common owner concern in these dogs. Some dogs have severe alopecia with only the head and distal extremities retaining a coat. Number 1. Almost all dogs with Cushing's disease are older than 6 years of age. By far the most accurate, safe and effective method of diagnosing Cushing's disease is urine cortisol to creatinine ratio test UCCR followed by an ultrasound. This test involves the collection of a single urine sample taken first thing in the morning. Ideally, these samples should be collected at your home to minimize the effects of a stress due to a hospital visit. By collecting this sample, the average amount of cortisol that has been left into the urine overnight can be assessed. In dogs, with Cushing's disease, the amount of UCCR test is elevated. However, other diseases and infections can also increase UCCR, so this test should be followed by full abdominal ultrasound. Also, urine-specific gravity is less than 1.025 in this dog. Other tests such as low-dose dexamethasone suppression test, LDDST, and ACT stimulation test are expensive and sometimes can be unreliable. Treatment of Cushing's disease is never a benign procedure and should not be initiated unless the dog shows unambiguous clinical signs of the disease. Most veterinarians treat both adrenal and pituitary dependent Cushing's disease with medications. Medical treatments include trilostane, veteriol, which stops the production of cortisol in the adrenal glands, and mitotane, lysodrine, which destroys the layers of adrenal glands that produce cortisol. Trilostane should not be given to a dog that has kidney or liver disease or pregnant dogs. Prognosis Dogs with Cushing's disease can live a good life if they are monitored closely by a veterinarian and the owner is diligent about bringing the dog for checkups.